Hello friends, welcome to the educational series on world-renowned scientists and technologists. We're going to study about Thomas Alva Edison and Nikola Tesla today, one of the most well-known and prominent scientists of the 19th century. Please watch till the end to learn about Thomas Alva Edison and Nikola Tesla. If you like it, please give a thumbs up and share this video to your friends and relatives. Now let's watch this video. Thomas Alva Edison Samuel and Nancy Edison were very proud parents. It was the 11th of February 1847 and they had their seventh child. A healthy little boy they called Thomas Alva. From the day he was born, in Ohio, USA, till he was a grown man, they would call him Alva. At a very early age little Alva developed hearing problems, but this was not unusual, for many members of the Edison family had the same problem. None of the Edisons realize what an impact this small handicap would have on little Alva's life and on the shape of our world. In 1854, when little Alva was seven years old, his father got a job as a lighthouse keeper and carpenter at a military post in Port Huron. The entire family moved there. They moved into a big spacious house, with a large basement. This was when little Alva entered school. School was a disaster. Although little Alva was intelligent, imaginative and inquisitive, he could not follow any of the lessons in class. This was due to his hearing problem. Instead of understanding his problem, the school called poor little Alva a misfit who was poor in his studies. So little Alva's parents decided to keep him at home and teach him as best as they could. At home, little Alva became a voracious reader. He read anything he could lay his hands on. In particular, the books that contained scientific experiments fascinated little Alva. He was so fascinated that he soon set up his own little laboratory in the spacious basement under his house. He stocked his secret laboratory with chemicals and at the tender age of 10, little Alva began conducting his very first experiments. One day his mother came barging into his secret laboratory. She shouted, Alva. What is that bad smell that is coming from down here? What are you doing? The bad smell came from the chemicals that little Alva was using. Forced to close his laboratory, little Alva soon became very bored. He tried attending school for a short while, but just could not cope up. In 1859, Alva quit school and began working on the trains that passed between Port Huron and Detroit. On the train, Alva started selling candy, dried fruit, snacks and newspapers. Just three years later Alva made history. While riding the train, Alva hit upon an idea. He said to himself, why don't I start up a newspaper on the train? All I will need is a second-hand printing machine. Alva found the printing machine and set it up in the baggage car of the train. And that's how the Weekly Herald was born. It was the first newspaper to be published aboard a moving train. After a short while Alva turned his attention to telegraphy. It was a booming business and Alva was keen on learning all about it. He joined as an apprentice telegrapher in 1863. Alva liked telegraphy because his partial deafness did not create any problems, since all telegraph messages were sent in Morse code. A series of dots and dashes that appeared on a strip of paper. Once they were decoded, they could be read. Soon the telegraph office began introducing sound keys that enabled the telegrapher to hear the Morse code. Alva's partial deafness was once again giving him trouble. Thomas Alva Edison never gave up. He uses his imagination and insight to improve and invent new equipment that could convert the Morse code into printed letters. In the midst of all of this, Alva began working on small inventions. His first patent in 1868 was for a vote recorder that speeded up the vote counting process. But unfortunately, no one seemed interested in buying his invention. Alva vowed not to invent anything unless he was sure that it had commercial value. He stuck to this vow, and by 1869 he had successfully invented a stock ticker for Wall Street. It is a telegraph capable of transmitting two messages on the same wire and a printer that converted electrical signals into letters. Satisfied with his progress, 
Alva gave up his job in the telegraph office and became a full-time inventor and entrepreneur. Thomas Alva Edison moved to New York City and entered into a partnership with Frank Pope, a famous electrical expert. Together they developed and produced the Edison Universal Stock Printer. In 1871 Edison married a 16-year-old girl called Mary Stilwell. A few years later, Edison developed a new telegraph machine. This machine was capable of transmitting four messages at the same time. In December 1874, Jay Gould, a railroad baron, paid Edison $100,000 for the rights to the new machine. It was the largest payment for any invention at the time. Although they had the money, Edison and his wife could not save money. To reduce his temptation to spend money, Edison requested his father to build a laboratory and machine workshop in Menlo Park. In March 1876 Edison moved there with two of his associates Charles Batchelor and John Cruacy. Together they made the perfect team. At this time the telephone was gaining popularity. But Edison found it difficult to hear the voice on the phone. Once again Edison's partial deafness leads him to invent something wonderful. In 1877 Edison and his team had perfected a carbon button transmitter that would amplify the sound of the voice on telephone. An invention that is still used in modern phones. Edison's world was suddenly shattered, when his wife died, leaving him with three young children. Unable to take care of them on his own, Edison married 20-year-old Mina Miller. He built a new home for his bride and a sprawling new laboratory nearby. This was the world's first industrial research laboratory. It was in this very laboratory that Edison developed many of his famous inventions. Edison focused his attention on the light bulb at first. The electric lamps that existed at the time were short-lived and cumbersome. After making more than 1,200 experiments Edison hit upon an idea. He passed electricity through a carbonized thread. The thread passed through a vacuum-filled glass tube. When the electricity flowed through it, the bulb lit up brightly. With the success of his light bulb behind him, Edison began perfecting the phonograph. A revolving machine that recorded and reproduced sound. Then Edison came up with the brilliant idea of linking the phonograph to a gadget called the zoetrope. This gadget was used by photographers to create an illusion of movement. After carefully studying the work of others who had tried, Edison and his associate, William Dixon, succeeded in constructing a movie camera and a viewing instrument. With his new invention, Edison shot the world's first motion picture. A silent movie nicknamed, Black Maria. At the time Edison also started work on an alkaline battery. After a phenomenal 10,296 experiments he invented a battery that could store electricity. To his surprise, the battery became very popular. And soon he began supplying them to submarines and electric vehicles. In 1912, Henry Ford, one of Edison's greatest admirers, asked him to design a battery for the self-starter in the new Ford cars. During World War I, Edison became the head of the Naval Consulting Board, and for three years he worked on inventions to help the U.S. Navy. His inventions included devices that could detect torpedoes as soon as they were fired, a loudspeaker telephone so that a conversation could be carried on in the middle of a battle, and a glare eliminator to make it possible for ships to see periscopes. Throughout his life Edison always invented for necessity. Besides holding the record for having created the world's first industrial research laboratory, Edison was the first inventor to hold 1,093 patents for his inventions. When Edison died in October 1931, at his home in New Jersey, he left behind inventions that had virtually created three giant industries. The phonograph created the music industry. The light bulb created the electrical industry. And moving picture camera helped create the movie industry. Thomas Alva Edison always worked hard and thought positive. He never questioned whether something might be done, only how. It would be easy to understand the man Edison was, from the quote that he often used, genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Nikola Tesla Nikola Tesla was born on July 10, 1856 was inventor, electrical engineer, mechanical engineer, and futurist. 
He is known for his contributions to the design of the modern alternating current AC, electricity supply system. In the 1870s, Tesla pursued his initial studies in physics and engineering without graduating. Subsequently, in the early 1880s, he worked in the emerging electric power business at Continental Edison and in telephony to get practical experience. He moved to the United States in 1884 and obtained naturalization there. Before going out on his own, he briefly worked at the Edison Machine Works in New York City. Tesla established labs and businesses in New York to create a variety of mechanical and electrical devices, with the assistance of partners to help finance and promote his inventions. He made a significant amount of money from his AC induction motor and associated polyphase AC inventions, which Westinghouse Electric licensed in 1888 and used as the basis for the polyphase system that the business subsequently sold. Tesla tried a variety of experiments with mechanical oscillators slash generators, electrical discharge tubes, and early X-ray imaging in an effort to create ideas that he could patent and commercialize. Additionally, he constructed one of the first remote-controlled boats. As an inventor, Tesla rose to fame, showing off his creations in his lab to affluent and famous guests. He was also well known for his stage presence at public talks. During the 1890s, Tesla conducted high-voltage tests in Colorado Springs and New York to further explore his concepts for wireless illumination and global wireless distribution of electric power. He declared in 1893 that his devices might be able to communicate wirelessly. Tesla tried to put these ideas to practical use in his unfinished Wardenclyffe Tower project, an intercontinental wireless communication and power transmitter but ran out of funding before he could complete it. After Wardenclyffe, Tesla experimented with a series of inventions in the 1910s and 1920s with varying degrees of success. He died in New York City on January 7, 1943. Tesla's work fell into relative obscurity following his death, until 1960, when the General Conference on Weights and Measures named the International System of Units (SI) measurement of magnetic flux density the Tesla in his honor. There has been resurgence in popular interest in Tesla since the 1990s. Alternating current (AC) is an electric current that periodically reverses direction and changes its magnitude continuously with time. In contrast to direct current (DC), which flows only in one direction, AC is generated through rotating machines such as turbine, windmill. DC current is generated through solar cells, solar panels convert sunlight directly into DC electricity and fuel cells, these generate DC by combining hydrogen and oxygen to produce electricity. Traveling distance. It's safe to transfer alternating current over long distances and maintain electric power it can transfer between two cities. From comparing AC to DC current, it's found that DC cannot travel for far distances. Its DC loses electric power. Electron flow. In AC, electrons keep switching their direction from frontward to backward. Electrons only move in a forward direction in a DC motor. Frequency. The frequency of the alternating current is generally between 50 to 60 Hertz. Moreover, its frequency depends upon the country. The direct current has no or zero frequency. Source of availability. The source of availability for AC current is AC generators. The source of availability for DC current is either battery, electrochemical cell, or photovoltaic cell. Loss of energy. As compared to DC, the loss of energy during the transmission in AC voltage is low. DC involves a high loss of energy and is hence not preferred when transformers are at a distance. Types. Generally, AC current is of sinusoidal type. Its other types can be triangular and square trapezoidal. The DC current is of pure and pulsating form. Application. AC is capable of powering electric motors used in washing machine, refrigerators and so on. DC is preferably used in cell phones, flat screen TVs and so on. So, AC generation and devices are dominant in the past hundred years. Recent trend of EV and solar stimulates need for DC devices and applications in home appliances. Kindly comment which you prefer.
This technology race between AC and DC reflects the challenge between two best brains in the scientific community. Kindly share your opinion in the comment section which one will last longer. The concept of free energy supply to the consumers is still a dream for more than 100 years. Give a thumbs up. Who wants to support this Tesla's vision? Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, kindly subscribe and click on the bell button to get our subsequent videos.